Hello everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 89 of Daryl20's Let's Play series, where today I am getting ready to play a little bit with Integrated Dynamics. Uh, so last episode we kind of started looking at it, but super, super, super quickly. Uh, really just kind of got the basics in place. And today we're going to look a little bit deeper into how Integrated Dynamics works, what all the amazing and powerful things you can do with it are, and then hopefully apply it to our blood magic system to fully automate the blood altar. Because automating the blood altar in a good way has always been like an eluded thing for me. Like I've always, it's always eluded me a little bit. Having it like just perfect. Like sometimes we have redstone signals and like all kinds of contraptionary thing. Like I'd like one simple... And I mean, I'm going to use the term simple here very loosely. One simple system to like manage it all in a perfect way. Now, whether or not that's going to be doable with integrated dynamics remains to be seen. It should be doable. Uh, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And we'll use integrated dynamics for something else. Fair? Cool. So last stream, or last episode, I put this up and running. And that's, you know, very quickly getting me lots and lots of mineral stuff. Thank you, rats. You're great. Uh, so to, to get started with integrated dynamics, there's a few things we're going to need to make. Um, and the most important thing is going to be uh, mineral resin stuff. Uh, basically, mineral this. Mineral resin, this stuff right here. Um, so when you chop down the trees... Um, and we can see this if we just look at integrated dynamics. When you chop down the trees, you will occasionally get crystallized mineral chunks. When you've, We've got a few when we cut down that tree out there in the world. Um, you can also put a mineral log into a mechanical squeezer, uh, and it'll automatically squeeze out some of them. And it'll also squeeze out a bucket's worth of resin. So that resin can then be hardened in a drying basin into a block of crystallized mineral that we can then turn into uh, nine mineral chunks. So we need these two things basically for most of the crafting recipes. The most surefire way of doing that is literally putting this in here and then jumping on it like so. Boop, 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 and we'll squeeze it out and then it'll pump itself directly into an adjacent drying basin, which will take a second or two, and then should harden and dry. Pretty cool. Boop. Now, there is a more automatable way to do this. Uh, however, it requires a healthy amount of crystallized mineral to get crafted. So we're going to do a few manual iterations of it just to get her done. Uh, and you can see by giving a redstone signal to the squeezer, it resets it for the next iteration. Right? So, boop, boop. And then, same deal. Pretty cool. Nice, right? Nice. Pretty nice. So I'm just going to get a few blocks of this stuff. I think I need four in total. I think I need eight in total, actually, thinking it through. Thinking it through, I may need eight. Hooray. So we'll get there. Let's see. So that's four down. Five, really, if you think about it. Not bad. And then I've got a little bit of a crafting teachery thing to go on over here. So what I'd like to do for integrated dynamics, I'd like you to know how to make these. Uh, I'd like you to know how to make this. Because generally we'll have a lot of these from automating the mineral logs into crystallized mineral, then we'll have to down convert it as needed kind of thing. Now there's a lot more crafting that we're gonna have to automate here, but for now this will get the ball rolling and then we'll, you know, do a little bit more in a minute. Unfair? I think so. Let's put away some of the things we're not gonna need at the moment. So part of me wants to have these in a chest in this room the other part of me wants to not do it this way but i think i'm going to do it this way i'm going to put all my blood magic stuff in here for the time being just just cause just cause because i feel like that's a good plan right um you can go away i don't super need you out i don't need you out at the moment everything else can stay in my inventory at this second yes i think that seems cool maybe i'll put you away too we'll see Okay, so I should have the eighth one of these dried out. That means you, and now I can convert these, if I'm correct, 
into the mechanical version of these blocks. So those were the manual versions of the squeezer and the drying basin, right? The mechanical version uh, requires two energy batteries, which need two blocks of crystallized mineral each. Cool. So now I should be able to upgrade you, and that's Colleen's. Nice. Available. Missing two. Oh, because I need to craft some mineral. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. So we need a little bit more. So let's just pop the, the crystallized squeezer here. Now, you are going to be power related. So let's get some ultimate universal cable times two. They're going to both need power in a minute. Right, so he's got power now. I can now just pop this in here, and how great is that? He'll start filling up his mineral resin. Super, super more efficient, right? Super better. And then you're gonna come over here. Will you automatically transport or no? I may not be able to. Yeah, we might have to do it this way. But in a moment, we will automate this. Push to adjacent tanks, true. Yeah, that's what we want. Now he does. That's cool. Sweet. Ah, broke a lot of blocks there. So that should be what we need. And now I should be able to take this dude and upgrade him. Nice. So now you do that. Way, way, way better. That's cool, right? Isn't that much better? And if we take a look at this guy, we will see that we've got a little bit more going on. We can throw another stack of this in here. And that's probably all the mineral we're gonna need for the foreseeable future. So I'm gonna remove this. Uh, and then I'm also going to demute this area here. Can I delete this? Delete anchor? Sweet, I can, neat. I had muted the block breaking sound that this was making because that got real annoying real fast. And uh, I also want my rats back. Hey buddies. Thank you. Looking good. All right, have you done all the things? Mostly. You got a bunch of that. See how quickly... Yeah. Usually a stack or two of this mineral wood is more than enough. More than enough. Um, crystallized mineral than you'll need for the foreseeable future. It really does generate a lot of this stuff. And I'm not complaining, by the way. Very pleased with that. Sweet. Yeah, because basically each block or each log gets you uh, an entire bucket and each bucket gets you an entire block. So we're going to have like two stacks of crystallized mineral here. I think we'll be fine. Not bad at all. See? And it's fast. So, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan for like, let's not let's not bog the user down with silly things. So now integrated dynamics. There's a few things we're going to want to have. Uh, MBT extractor remote. Oh, that's neat. That's cool. I don't know what that does, but that looks cool. Allows extraction of deeply nested values from an NBT typed variable. Oh, I like that. We got to play with that. Crafting interface from integrated holds crafting variables for crafting in the targeted machine. Oh, I like that. Starts crafting jobs. Also cool. These are add-on mods, I believe, for integrated dynamics, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, so we're going to want variable cards. That's going to be a pattern we want to have in here. Um, I don't know that we need the labeler yet. Facades, that's neat. I didn't know that that was added. We're going to want input variable transformers. We're going to want output variable transformers. A lot of these are crafting components, and a lot of these get very complicated, but I will be explaining to you what they do in a very short time. So for now, I'm just prepping all the things I need to make, right? So let me make myself a logic programmer. This is the block form of the logic programmer block. This is the portable form. There's no difference between them, except one can be carried and used in your hand, and the other is a block. I will be going over how this nonsense works, because it's very complicated mod, extremely complex, but not insurmountable and extremely powerful, right? Because you need complexity for the kinds of things we're gonna wanna do. You need it, you just can't get away from it. Cool. Uh, what other integrated dynamics things might we want? Uh, we're totally going to want a variable store. So I want to program all the things that we need here, right? Variable store, yes. Logic programmer, we're good. I don't think we need energy batteries. We'll find out. Um, 
I feel like the default in integrated dynamics is this doesn't cost RF. I don't know if that's been changed or not, but we'll find out. These guys, I don't think we need to worry about generally. Those are like really complex things that you don't normally have to do. The layers kind of neat. Mechanical squeezer, drying basin. Where's like the brains of the operation thing? Is it just a variable store? It might be. Uh, what we do want is a lot of these. So I want block reader, I think. I want entity reader. I usually like having some of those for some things. There's some of these that you'll use more often than others. I don't think I need fluid. Inventory reader, might need at some point. Machine reader, we're definitely gonna need, I think. Um, network reader, redstone reader will be nice to have. World reader, I mean, generally, I don't think we need that one. Usually what I want for writers would be redstone writer. I don't know that we need any other writers at this point. Static light panel, no. I want the display panel, yes. And they need static light panels, so yes. Mono directional connector, that's cool. Oh, that's neat. Other dimension things? That's, uh, that's pretty cool. I think that's new. Storage terminal, crafting job terminal. Now I might need some of these things. So these will be world energy item interface. Yeah, I'm gonna want item interfaces probably. And we're gonna want item importers and item exporters. These are gonna be used to transfer items around. I don't think I need much else at this time, but we'll figure out if we do. Player simulator, by the way, is another super cool thing. But you guys all go into the auto crafting pool, got it? Apparently not, because we don't have enough crafter spots. Let me get two gold crafters while I'm here. At one point, would I update to the netherite crafter? Probably at some point. It's not that important to upgrade to the netherite crafter, I think, is my feeling on the matter. Did I have two of those? Oh yeah, that's right, they don't stack. That's fair. All right, so we've got a lot of the auto crafting ready for this stuff. So let's start with integrated dynamics. So what I'm gonna want is a machine reader and a display panel so we can start showing you how this mod works, okay? So display panel, we're gonna want, um, we may want the inventory reader, I'm not quite sure. You don't know how to make those? You don't know how to make sticky pistons? Or you just don't have, I guess you don't know how to make sticky pistons. Well, you're about to learn. Cool. Um, so there's your panel. I'm gonna grab the inventory reader, because why not? Oh, really, slime balls are out of? Killing me, Smalls. So we're gonna want the inventory reader, yes. We're going to want probably a redstone writer to demonstrate some of this functionality. And this is gonna like, I'm gonna start off showing you how things work and then we'll get into more and more complexities. Is that fair? Machine reader. Uh, I'll also get block reader, wherever that is. That's him. And give me some more variable cards. Cool. And that looks good to me. All right, sleep through the night because rain. And then we're going to check out integrated dynamics. So integrated dynamics is a very cool mod, is really what it comes down to. Uh, we also want a variable store, by the way. I always forget about that one. Oh, you know what else we need? Cables. I didn't even I didn't even think about cables. How did I forget cables? Why did you guys let me forget cables? It's all y'all's fault. How could you guys let me forget about cables? Yeah, we're gonna want like a stack or so of those. Sweet. So let's start with something very simple, a chest. Easy peasy, right? We understand chests. We're gonna talk about chests. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a variable store here. This is kind of your brains of the operation, 
okay? Uh, and we're gonna have cables that connect things. Now, cables can share block spaces with other things. Generally speaking, in integrated dynamics, um, you have readers, which read information about a block or an object in the world. So you can read what's in the inventory, you can read the block itself, you can read an entity standing in a block space, you can add, you can read fluid, you can read world information. So you can find out information, you can detect information about that thing that you're looking at. And then you have writers that make changes to things in the world. So for example, the redstone writer will emit a redstone signal where the redstone reader will detect what redstone signal is being applied to it. Right? So this reads the redstone signal in an area, this writes out a redstone signal, so it, it emits a redstone signal to adjacent redstone. Okay. Um, I don't know how a lot of these other writers work, if I'm being honest. I generally don't. Um, but then there, So that's integrated dynamics. Then you have integrated tunnels, which is more of like an item and fluid and energy transport system. So this is kind of like XNet, in that you can transfer items or fluids or energy between blocks. Unlike XNet, you need different interfaces um, instead of just one interface. So you need an item importer and an item exporter. And that can take items out of an inventory and put them into a different inventory, for example. Um, the other thing we have is the display panel, which is really great for learning this mod and debugging what you're doing. So it's a way to read information, for example, from an inventory or a block reader or a machine reader, and then um, go ahead and, and, and display it on a display panel, and it'll show you what you're seeing. Cool? So let's take a look. So what I'm gonna do is attach a block reader first. And what the block reader can do is detect certain conditions about the block in the space. Only the block, not the tile entity data, which means the contents of the chest. And this is where we get into the deep innards of Minecraft. The block just defines basic information. It's a chest, that's all we know. The tile entity is the portion of this block space that determines all the data that the chest holds, like what items are inside it, what fluids if it were a tank, right? That kind of stuff. So very simple condition has block. This is a Boolean and it's reading whether or not there's a block in the space, right? I can add a variable card here. And when I place the variable card in this slot, it emits a um, programmed variable card into this inventory spot so that you can see whether or not there's a block in that space. And then if we want, we can apply that right here and place that in here. Um, so this is the display panel. It's going to display the contents of a variable card. So basically the gist is variable cards go into a reader and they get associated to the spot that you put them in, right? And when you do so, it's, it's going to change that variable based on the conditions of the block that the reader is reading. And another way to put this is if there's a block there, it's saying true. If there's not a block there, it's going to say false. See? Any block. True. False, true, false, very simple. Nothing complicated about this so far, right? So all this variable condition here has block if the target space has a block in it, that's it. And you could do some very simple things with this, right? So if we wanted to, what we could do is have a redstone writer, for example, here, and we could have a little bit of redstone control. And what we could set up is we could say, hey, uh, hey redstone writer, go ahead and emit a redstone signal using that variable card. And what this means is if there's a block in the space, it's gonna emit a redstone signal. And if there's not a block in the space, it's not. Because block is true, we're reading this, this has block conditional, and we've tied that has block conditional to this emit redstone signal control. So all we're saying here is if there's a block, emit a redstone signal, and that's it. Very simple, the most basic approach, I think that you could demonstrate with integrated dynamics to show how the system works. Okay, now, you know, there's other things we can do, obviously. So um, you can see if there's a tile entity NBT, you could see, you know, information about the light level and the biome and all kinds of other stuff, right? Um, so light level is 15. So this one might be fun, right? So like, let's put a variable card in there. Um, it's an integer rather than a true false. So if I pop this guy into here, it's all of a sudden light level zero, right? Light level 14. Cool. Um, now, if we cover this up in a, you know, interesting kind of way, you know, now it's light level 13 in that space, right? Now, what you can do with this is kind of cool. You could emit a redstone signal instead of this here. This redstone is an integer value. It accepts an integer card, outputs the value as an exact redstone signal. So if we wanted to be super cool about this, 
we could put the integer variable in there and we could say, see how it's outputting power 13? When I break this block, it's now outputting 15 because the light level is 15. If I cover this up again, it's emitting 13. And if I were to, you know, do a little bit more here, I meant to break that block, so don't mind me, right? Now it's emitting 11, for example, right? So see how that can be used? So you can, you can detect more than just Boolean variables, like a true or false. You can detect more complex things like, you know, integer values and whatnot. So some pretty neat stuff that you can do with this, as you can probably start to imagine if this is your first time seeing this mod, you might be like, oh yeah, I could see you could do some cool things with that. Now we can we can read beyond that, right? So I'm gonna remove this guy. Uh, I think there's a wrench that makes this removal faster, isn't there, from this dude? That might not be a bad idea. Um, and by the way, if you have a variable card you no longer need, just self-craft it and it'll erase it. Cool? Pretty easy peasy. So now let's go ahead and read tile entity data, right? So now we're gonna read something a little bit more uh, in depth, right? So machine reader, um, let's see what that can do. It might be that. So is worker, right? If the target is a working machine, has work. So this would be like furnaces, like, you know, does it have work to do? Is it a ticking tile entity, I guess, would be the main gauge of this. You can measure things like temperature, that's cool. I wonder if that's, you know, works with um, integrated dynamics and whatnot. Um, whether it does recipes. So there's a lot of complexity here that I'm not gonna get super into, but is forge energy handler, like can it accept forge energy, right? Um, stored FE, FE capacity, FE fill ratio, is RS network, oh, that's cool. So I don't see anything in the machine reader about fluids, right? So let's remove you and put the inventory reader in here, right? We'll see what we get there, okay? So inventory reader has Booleans for inventory full, inventory empty. So see how inventory empty currently reports as true and full is false and not empty is false. But if I put one item in there, all of a sudden it's no longer empty. It's definitely not full, but it's not empty either. And it's also not empty. So uh, those are your Booleans. Is inventory true? Because it actually has an inventory. Inventory count zero, slots 27. So if I were to put like an item in there, see inventory count becomes 64. If I put some more items in there, inventory count will become 96, right? So you can read the amount of items in the inventory. Um, how many slots there are in the inventory, how many slots are filled, the fill ratio. You can also get a full list of items. So if I did that and we looked at the items list here, we will literally see all the items that are on there. And I could totally link that to a card like so. And that's a list variable, by the way. See this type list. And if I put that in here, we'll see variable card, quantum bag, bucket, portable logic programmer, sand. Neato burrito, right? Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, now, here's the question. Can I measure Can I measure fluids inside this? So let's get a tank, because I was really hoping that I could measure fluids. I assumed I could. Um, but if we just got like a simple basic fluid tank, will you measure that? And if not, what kind of reader do I need to measure the fluid level? Because I got to imagine I can do that. Um... I don't see anything about fluids. So I might need a different kind of reader. Audio block entity extra dimensional fluid reader reads fluid tanks. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. That is probably what we will need. That's probably what we'll need. I assumed fluid reader meant like reading the fluid in the world, but no. Fluid reader is actually measuring the fluids. Oh, do I need actually full buckets of water? No way. No way. I guess I do. I guess I do. Thank you. So you'll measure the fluid in the tank, right? Um, so you are a big red X because you're no longer applicable to what I had there. So tank full, tank empty, tank not empty, is tank, fluid amount, cool. Total fluid amount, fluid capacity, total fluid capacity, tanks, nice, it can read the number of tanks. That's cool. Tank capacities, this is useful because 
the blood altar has multiple fluid tanks in it. Let's go hook it up over there and see what, it, what kind of information we can see. Does that sound like a plan? I think that sounds like a plan. Let's start applicking this to what we're actually trying to do. Cool. And we'll talk about the flu the, 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 the thing that I was looking at there a minute ago in a minute. So if we were to have the fluid reader here and we had the variable store here. Cool. And then we had the display panel here. Yeah. We could see, what are you reading now? Fluid amount, fluid capacity, tanks. Oh, there isn't one tank now? Is that it? Is there only one tank on the blood altar now? Maybe there is. Maybe I'm maybe I'm incorrect about that. Actually, I'm confused because I should be seeing fluid information on this guy. Oh, because he, uh, I haven't hooked up to the lava stone. There's your uh, there's your problem. He's not a tank at all. There's your problem. Dire, please. Don't forget we have the auto import into the, the item collector here. So any any blocks you break will go directly into your refined storage system. Cool. Uh, hey, tank full true. Tank empty false. Okay, fluid amount 10,000. Fluid capacity 10,000. Tanks one. Okay, that's cool. That's good to know. Tank fluids, tank capacities, tank fluid, block fluid. Nice. So let's see what this says. Fluid, blood magic, life, essence, fluid, 10,000 millibuckets. Ha <laughs> ha! How cool is that, huh? I guess, I guess blood altars now only have one tank? It doesn't no longer have that reservoir tank mechanic to it? I'm not quite sure. I might be wrong. Maybe, maybe he simplified that a little bit. That's cool though, right? So here's a thing we can do. You ready? So now let's measure the amount of fluid in this tank and emit a redstone signal based on a certain variable. That sound cool? So the first thing we need to do is find out how much fluid is in the tank. So we're gonna do fluid amount, boom. And that'll tell us how much fluid is in the tank. 10,000, very simple, right? Uh, what I'm gonna do is take that and we're gonna take a look at the portable logic programmer. So what this is, is it's a way to take logic variable cards that you've created and manipulate them in some way to do some kind of logic around them. So for example, we know how much fluid is in the tank. But we want to check if it's, let's say, greater than 3,000, right? Uh, so to do that, we need to see this number 10,000 and do something to it, right? So what I'm going to do is, first off, I'm going to uh, create an integer, right? So I think I can do that here. Just a straight up static integer called 3,000. And I'm going to put a variable card in there. So now I have a variable card that represents how much fluid is in the tank. And I have a variable card that represents the number 3000. Okay. Then what we want to do is do a logic operator to find out if it's greater than, right? Or we can do greater than or equal to if we wanted to be a little bit more careful. And what we'll say is, is the fluid in the tank, this variable, greater than 3000? the integer variable we just defined. And when we get a green check mark here, we know that the thing we just set up is accurate. Um, now, if we got super deep into this, we can see the input types, the output types, and that kind of stuff. If you're a programmer really minded person, you'll notice that it can input, and out, uh, input any type and it outputs a Boolean, right? So when we put a card here, a blank card, it's going to turn that into a variable card that basically you can read, is it saying it's taking variable IDs four and five, this is variable ID four, this is variable ID five, and outputs variable ID six, that's this one. Um, the gist here is, is we just created a variable card that represents the logical flow of what's in the tank being greater than 3000. So in order for this card to be able to operate, he's getting a red X right now because it needs variable four and five to be in the current network, AKA in a variable store somewhere in the network. You can have multiple variable stores. If you become you know, really complex with some of your integrated dynamic stuff, you'll see that happen. So if I put variable ID four in there, you'll see his only complaint now is that we're missing variable ID five, okay? Now, if we put variable ID five in there, we're gonna get a true. How cool is that? 
right? Right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this be less than 3000, okay? So if I were to stand up here and we were to say, hey buddies, boop, make that a little bit faster for me, would you? You did a reinforced slate. Why are you guys all doing that? Oh, because of this. Oh, because of this. Okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. Whoop. Whoop. Now, how much is in there at the moment? Let's find out. Divination sigil. 1,000 LP currently. 1,000 is not greater than 3,000, so we got a false down here. How cool is that? So a very simple example, but you can imagine that there's some extreme complexities that you can get into here because these readers read a lot of information about, you know, the stuff in their blocks, which is cool. You can read some really good information, stuff that's usually not easily available to the player. Um, like you can generally read straight up NBT values, I think. So let's see, where's my readers here? Um, world reader, redstone reader, network reader, machine reader, inventory reader, fluid, extra dimensional entity, block, and audio. I think machine, does machine reader show me NBT data? I might need to hook you up to a thing. Not sure, we'll find out. Recipes, I don't see the NBT value directly. It might it might be something, something, we'll figure it out. Let's see, maybe the, the block reader, did block reader have NBT value on it? Block reader. Tile entity NBT, yeah. So it's not always the case that all tile entities show you all information that you might want to know. Um, so for example, if that's the case, you can dig deep into the innards of Minecraft's data storage system, which is called NBT, to find information you want. So what I can do here is just pop this NBT card in here and we can see the NBT values that are stored directly on this thing. So you can see that it very quickly, this is how Minecraft stores the data about chests. And we can kind of see that, which is pretty cool. Right? Minecraft sand, count 31B, ID Minecraft chest. Like, see all that information on the top there? And you can get some really good information um, out of this if you so choose. Uh, so, for example, if you wanted to read numerical values from Batania, they don't normally show you that, but behind the scenes, there's absolutely information there, right? So, if I wanted to get uh, a mana pool, let's see, do I have one handy that I could go tap into? Let's do that. Come here, you. We could read some good information here. So I could do my block reader, boop, with this guy, you here, you here. I'm gonna reset this, and then we'll put our display panel here. We can read information about the NBT on this mana pool and learn a lot of stuff about him. See all the values that we can find out about things? So if you really want to get complicated, you totally can. Pretty neat, right? Yeah, super cool. All right, so that's kind of an introduction to integrated dynamics and all the extremely powerful stuff you can do. It can be very simple, as in just is the value greater than the other? And this can be used to emit a redstone signal, this Boolean, in the same way that we use the you know, the block conditional earlier on in the episode. If there was a block there, we emit a redstone signal because it was a Boolean card. This is also a Boolean card. So we can very easily move this card into a redstone writer and emit a redstone signal based on whether or not that's there. Or we can continue using integrated dynamics to use this as a conditional as to whether or not to move items from one inventory to the next. Cool? So I think that's a good wrapping up point for the episode for now. How about we come back next episode and take it a step further? We'll either use this as a way to control redstone um, to move items from one to the other, right? Or, or um, 
we'll we'll do something else. I'm thinking I might want to keep it simple for the first integrated dynamics build because it, it can get very complicated and I don't want to overwhelm you guys with it. Um, so what I might do is use modular routers, right? Can I redstone control a single component of modular routers? Uh, that's what I'm thinking, right? So like sender and puller module, right? Um, so like sender mark two, puller mark two. Can I um, so rather than activator, if I have, you know, puller and sender, right, can you be controlled by redstone but the other one not? Is that a thing I can do? So the whole thing can be redstone mode high. Okay. Yeah, no, I can, I might need two modular routers, but I think I can handle this. I was hoping I could do it all in one. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, is there a way to, with modular routers, to straight up just be like, hey, you know, disable this module based on redstone? I don't know. I don't know, we'll find out. I'll come back next episode and find out. Uh, there's the detector module. There's the extruder module and redstone augment. That might be what I want. That might be what I want. Yes, redstone mode, always low, high. Perfect, that's what I want, that's what I want. Redstone augment, I can do this all in one block now. We'll come back next episode and try that out. That sound cool? All right, for now, Devil 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time. We will play with modular routers as a way to control the blood altar auto crafting bit, okay? And what we'll do, yeah, I like this plan. I think this will work. We'll go from there, yes, yes, yes. I have plans in my head. We'll figure it out next episode. For now, Double Play signing off. Hope you enjoyed it. Take it easy.